My name is Lakin O'Hara, I'm a planner with Orange County Zoning Division. Uh, with me tonight are District 1 County Commissioner Nicole Wilson's staff, uh, Commissioner County Zoning staff, uh, Ted Kozak, um, and then the applicant team is here as well. So there's several opportunities. Uh, you can provide comments tonight um, and we'll have a discussion. And then you can also provide your comments to me via email or by phone. Um, the hearing is tomorrow, so um, you can also provide, I had a couple of those community meeting notices there that you should have received in the mail, so you can also um, write your name and address on the back of those and provide comments in support or in opposition. Um, and then you can also uh, send me an email, um, or you may have already mailed in those sheets as well. Um, and then I will provide that to the BTA tomorrow for their um, information and consideration. Um, no matter how you contact us, please make sure that you provide us with your name and address. Um, and then once the BZA adopts a recommendation, the next day begins a mandatory 15-day calendar um, appeal. So during the appeal period, uh, anyone may file an appeal of the decision of the BZA. Um, there is a cost involved to file. Uh, if an appeal is filed or um, if a member of the Board of County Commissioners has an issue with the request, a separate public hearing will be scheduled before the BCC at a later date. Um, where you will have uh, the same opportunity again to provide input as with the BCA. If there is no appeal filed, um, then it would, and the commissioners are satisfied with the recommendation of the BCA, then on September 27th, the BCC will vote on the BCA's recommendations to finalize the process. Um, and Commissioner Wilson, would you like to say anything? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go back here. Thank you to the whole water log. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm listening also. Um, I'm here to listen to my residents. I'm here to listen to the applicant. I'm really um, a believer in the process. So from here, if you have any questions that we can help with, please let us know. Uh, Hannah is here. Drew is here. This is my, this is my uh, dream team. So um, we're here for you, um, and we can hopefully find the answers. And please sign up for our newsletter if you're not already signed up, <laughs> because um, if you're not already signed up, you wouldn't have received, but if you are, you would have received a two-day notice for this community meeting through email. So that's what we, we do every community yeah, meeting. So, and anything that comes to the BCC. So please sign up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So again, this is a special exception request. Uh, the case number is SE 22080063, and it is located in District 1. Um, the future land use for the subject property is institutional, um, and then it is also on portions of the property of uh, Goka Rural Settlement 1 to 1. The zoning for the property is A1, and um, the portion where the existing Woodlawn Funeral Home is zoned plan development. It's the Woodlawn Funeral Home Plan Development. Um, the zoning designation for A1 primarily allows agricultural uses, um, single family homes, um, and then it does allow some uh, institutional uses such as funeral homes, um, which is the request, and uh, this is permitted through the special exception process. What you're about to see is a brief presentation explaining uh, the request. So, so again, they're requesting um, a special exception in the A1 and PD zoning districts to allow construction of a new 19,236 square foot funeral home to replace an existing 14,000 square foot funeral home. So the submittal date for this application was uh, on July 13th, 2022. Uh, the public hearing for this with, before the Board of Zoning Adjustment is tomorrow, September 1st. And then the community meeting date is obviously, obviously today, August 31st. And then the BCC hearing date um, is scheduled for September 27th. And that would be if this were to be approved on consent and the BCC um, and or no appellants uh, have an issue with the case and the BCA recommendations. And then this is just some more background on it. Um, some of these things we already talked about. Um, the address I mentioned at the beginning, which is 544 Woodlawn Cemetery Road. Um, it's on the west west side of the Woodlawn Cemetery Road, uh, south of Old Winter Garden Road, uh, west of South Park of Woodland Road, and north of the Turnpike. Uh, the tract is over 103 acres, and then again, District 1. This is the overall location map. Um, you can see kind of um, 
it's the big white parcel in the center um, is the entirety of this request. There's kind of a little jut out parcel uh, right next to the star. That's where the existing funeral home is located. Uh, it's currently on its own parcel. Um, and then Ted, if you go to the next slide, that parcel has that uh, plan development zoning that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then this is overall, we are actually currently directly to the south of this site um, on the other side of Morton Jones Road. Um, and then this is fronted on multiple streets, Morton Jones Road, Woodlawn Cemetery Road, Butler Avenue, uh, Hart Avenue, and then I believe that there's one more that's, I think it's Lakeview Drive uh, to the west. So this is the overall site plan, um, just to orient you. Uh, Woodlawn Cemetery Road is uh, at the bottom of the page there. Um, so on that aerial on the previous slide, it was on the right-hand side. So the existing funeral home is highlighted there in green. That's the 14,000 square foot funeral home that's currently there. And then just to the north of that, there is an existing barn there that's proposed to be demolished. And that's where the new uh, funeral home and associated parking and stormwater would be going. This is a zoomed in site plan of uh, the image that we just saw. So you can see it's split into two phases. Uh, the first phase is the construction of the new funeral home and the associated parking and access. And then the second phase is providing internal connections as well as additional parking. And then that phase also includes the demolition of the existing funeral home. Um, and uh, demolition of all of the associated infrastructure. So it's gonna be reverted back to grass um, area. This is the proposed uh, floor plan for the new funeral home. And then these are the proposed elevations. Here's an image um, from Woodlawn Cemetery Road facing the subject property. And then again, facing the other direction. Here we have the existing barn that's proposed to be removed and replaced with the new funeral home. And then again, that same area from a different view. So like I was saying, uh, existing funeral home is 14,000 square feet. There's also a crematory uh, and then the cemetery, mausoleum buildings, and some accessory structures, including the barn that's proposed to be demolished with this project. Um, like I said, two phases. So we have the demolition of the barn and construction of the funeral home and associated parking. And then prior to that um, new funeral home getting its certificate of occupancy and signed off for its uh, to be used, that other funeral home is going to um, get its demolition permit. So they won't be operating at the same time. It'll just be one. Um, they're just trying to continue the operation uh, through getting that new funeral home running. So then again, phase two is the demolition, um, and then they're getting rid of all of that associated parking as well. So that's gonna be reverted back to grass area. Um, and then it's intended to be used as expanded cemetery area in the future um, and associated uses that are accessory to the cemetery and funeral home use that is already approved on the site. The net increase of the building is gonna be 5,236 square feet at the end of this. So again, vehicular access, as we saw on the site plan earlier, is going to be provided from Woodlawn Cemetery Road. Um, the existing access adjacent to the crematory uh, is going to stay, and then they're adding two new points of access um, off of the road. Um, the landscape plan uh, provides a buffer with canopy trees and shrubs along the perimeter, which meets the code requirements. Um, the existing, there are some existing trees to uh, be removed, but that will be subject to Chapter 15 of uh, Orange County Code, um, and there is already significant um, trees on site, and as you saw from that earlier photo, the existing barn area um, is where the proposed funeral home is going to be, so already that area um, doesn't have many trees that would need to go away. Um, and then the existing buffers to the north and the west of the proposed funeral home site are, uh, are going to remain. Um, Orange County Environmental Protection Division has no objection to this request. Um, they provided just a standard comment related to habitat protection. Uh, this is just a code requirement, so when this would were to come in for permitting, um, it would go through an environmental protection review and they would ensure that they're following and meeting those codes. 
Uh, parking requirements for the proposed funeral home, um, it requires one space per four chapel seats and then one space per commercial vehicle. They're providing 245 chapel seats, so that's required um, 62 spaces and then 18 commercial vehicles, so um, 18 parking spaces for that requirement um, for a total of 80 parking spaces. Uh, at the end of both phases, they'll be providing a total of 187 spaces. Uh, phase one is for, uh, with the construction of the new funeral home, proposes 127 paid parking spaces, and then there will be an additional uh, 60 spaces developed with that phase two. Uh, parking for all of the other uses on site was met uh, at the time of construction of each of those uses. That includes the existing funeral home, although that parking is going away with that funeral home going away. Um, and then the crematory as well. Do you want to maybe go back to the site plan and then? Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yep. And then, um, Owner Casey, do you do you have anything to add? Or? No, I mean, thank you, Richard. Uh, we of course had a community meeting last Thursday evening. Um, I think everyone was here except for, and I believe Kurt, correct? Kurt um, was present. So. Uh, the applicant is here to answer any questions, but this is really an opportunity for community to ask staff and the county questions, and then we'll, of course, provide any sort of information that we can so that will go along with that. That's a question. Uh, has staff come up with any conditions for special test? If so, what are they? Yeah, so the conditions of approval are um, mostly the standard conditions. Here. Oh, he asked, he asked us that. Yes, so he's inquiring about conditions of approval. Um, so each of the special exceptions um, and variances, whenever they come in, there we have associated conditions of approval. Um, we have uh, four standard, or, yeah, uh, three standard uh, conditions, and then um, those are just meeting um, the requirements of code or with any deviations that the approval that the BZA may grant, and then the Board of County Commissioners is anything that's not expressly permitted um, through this process or outright by code, it's not allowed, and you have to go through alternate processes. Um, it, so the first condition states that development will be in accordance with the site plan that has been provided and signed off on by, on by staff, as well as the uh, elevations that were provided. Um, and then uh, we have a condition related to the Florida statutes, and then um, the additional condition that's simply added is we have um, a requirement for permitting. So a permit for phase one shall be obtained within five years of final action on this application, or else this would be null and void. Um, the zoning manager does have the ability to extend the time if there's a justification provided for an extension, and that's reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. And then lastly, we have that prior to issuance of the final certificate of occupancy for the new funeral home, the existing funeral home um, shall be demolished. So those are the conditions that are proposed at this time. Uh, the Board of um, Zoning Adjustment can propose additional uh, conditions at the hearing. Um, and then that also, if it were to be pulled for an additional public hearing, um, additional conditions can be proposed or altered at that time. Yeah, if I could follow up. I had a conversation with Casey, appreciate that, and talked about lighting uh, outside of uh, speakers and amplifiers and sound systems and security. Uh, do you have any comments and along those lines, Casey? Absolutely. I'll refer to engineering on the lighting and the sound system, but I would like to address the security yes. um, that Kurt and I spoke about yesterday. And one of the things that we looked at was what we're looking to do here, which is a funeral home, which is an allowable use, as, as Lakin pointed out under Table 3877 of the Land Development Code, which is we have to come forth with a special exception for A1 zoning. And so therefore, we looked at whether or not the funeral home would therefore fall under something that we could impose a conditional, and I'll, I'll stand up, um, a condition of approval that Lakin talked about that we could tie into the land use approval. And, and it can't because for two reasons. 
The first being the land use approval for a funeral home under 3877 is its own entity while a cemetery is its own approval under 80 or under the same table as a special exception. The second part being, and, and I'm going to throw out some language here that Curtin and I had a, a very spirited conversation with by yesterday, but whether or not you can tack on to the approval to remove <laughs> one funeral home to a separate spot of whether or not we can impose security restrictions on that as a condition of approval. I've looked at the case law. I've got some cases here. Um, 444 Corporation versus the City of Orlando, which is cited as 598 Southern 2nd, 287. I know that doesn't mean anything to anybody, but one of the things that we look at in those cases is a Nolan and Dolan analysis of illegal exactions and whether or not the commission can in part on part of this approval, the land use thing to impose whether or not we can lock the gates, whether or not there are gates that need to be locked, whether or not there needs to be additional lighting that's put in the back of to the funeral home. And our analysis and my speaking with my partners and um, again, my research of the case law, um, we would feel, and, and again, we, we are more than welcome, and I think operations this welcome to working with the community with regard to the security issues but it's not something that we can do as a condition of approval on this special exception under a1 <laughs> and court i know I, I'm, I, I know you're teed up so i'll let you i'll let you retort <laughs> uh, I, I uh, secretary used to close the gates uh, at a half, half an hour after sunset and they would open them typically around sunrise or half an hour before sunrise Cemeteries are, are, by statute, as I understand it, not you're not allowed to be in the cemetery then. And I live abutting the cemetery, as a lot of these folks do. And there is persistent uh, illegal activity that we believe occurs on, on the cemetery property. I've talked to Sarah about it in the past, and she's actually been been helpful, very helpful about calling uh, law enforcement. Cemetery also cemetery. SCI, whoever, they used to have a security guard that would patrol the property every night. So they discontinued the security guard and they do not close the gates. And it allows for uh, continued uh, activities, uh, traffic through there, uh, cars racing, uh, uh, likely drug deals, uh, uh, sexual activity, uh, drug, it's, a, it's becoming a problem. So from a, from a practical standpoint, I would think SCI would, would want to take some steps to at least close the gates, especially since we're proposing two new entrances. So instead of the two primary entrances off Woodlawn now, it sounds like you're gonna have four. And so if that's the case, now you've got additional access points for the public to come onto the property uh, and, in inappropriate hours. So, so practically, whether you, whether it's a condition or an agreement with the individual uh, homeowners that abut the property, uh, the SCI property, we're fine. I, I've heard responses back saying, "Well, you know, even if we close the gates, the traffic will come in through the woods or through other alternatives." <laughs> Highly unlikely. I mean, you'll get some of that. But when I observe these people that come in, in it anywhere from Anytime it gets dark all the way to two or three in the morning, uh, they go in and out the primary entrances. So I think if if SCI was willing to close the gates during uh, during non-business hours, I think the community would be very, very happy. It would be good for SCI, it'd be good for the community. Uh, won't be getting calls in the middle of the night from, and it's just getting worse. I mean, now it's become known as a place to go for for untoward activities or partying or whatever, maybe it's a, a fun activity, but it's not It's not a place for that. So uh, that's my comment with respect to that. We hope that SCI would step up and voluntarily offer it as a condition. And if you don't want to do that, uh, I think uh, a, a written agreement with the community or the individual budding homeowners or others, or the Gotha Rural Settlement Association Inc. would be, would be helpful. Uh, with respect to the to the lighting, adding lighting, I think that is problematic. One of the things that Gotha really prides itself on is the dark skies. And so that's a problem. So if you try to solve the problem by lighting up the cemetery, you're going to be inconsistent with what one of the few areas in 
in this populated area of the county that has dark skies. So I understand that the cemetery has downlighting proposed. It would eliminate, hopefully, the outside glaring security lights that are now in the existing building. Uh, but that would be helpful, uh, and that would be a requested condition as well. Uh, and like and likewise, I think the cemetery and Sarah's been great about uh, the chimes that are there. They used to go off every hour and and, and for 15 minutes, and, and then she cut it back to a much more reasonable time, and just on special occasions. So great relationship. We just want to make sure that SCI is a good neighbor and that we're good neighbors to SCI. And I, so I, I want to thank the applicant for, for being involved and concerned enough to do a community meeting independently of the county, but it does put us on the, like, we're a little bit, Came up at a community meeting that we weren't involved in. The applicant didn't reach out to us to speak about any of this ahead of time. One of the things I think I probably would have said was I, I disagree about the exaction in a gate closing as a condition. We have examples of the county of, of, of those types of conditions and could include that if that's something that would help uh, the process. Everything that they would have to do now is going to be code compliant. So their site plan that they're proposed is compliant with the current codes. Landscaping, lighting would, is not reviewed under this uh, process typically. Uh, it does have to comply with Chapter 9 and it will have to be down lighting. Um, you're correct on that. Um, and it will be reviewed at construction plan um, stage. So just wanted to clarify that. Thank you very much because I'm not too knowledgeable in all the laws and all the little twists and goes into the law. The only thing we know is that I look like a raccoon on the other side of the fence and all there was light standing on my mouth. So it, it would be great. I mean, these people have been very, very good in what they did. For example, when I saw for the time to listen on the fence, they rushed immediately to to fix it actually it looks like nothing happened right i do appreciate that because it is i, I just would like to say so you don't mind asking what's the opposition to the well it, it, you guys heard it wrong we, we met together last week and like to, said, to, to madam commissioner to, to, to madam completely understand so, so when we met, or when we were speaking with Lakin, Lakin sent over the 31st, which was tonight's meeting, over to Juan. We had, a, at the same time, sent out a meeting on the 25th. Lakin reached out to me and said, hey, we didn't realize you were doing your own meeting, which is something that SCI likes to do, whether or not it's in Marion County, Orange County, wherever. Because even though we're not supposed to do it, we like to do it so that we... We're not supposed to do it, like, it's efficient. You know, I got to repeat something. That, you know, I also, it could have been, I mean, it could have been a little... Absolutely, Madam Commissioner, and, and I think one of the great things that came about it was uh, an email came to Lakin, was it this week? It feels like this week might have been maybe late last week, where they, they addressed a number of the concerns that are coming up, which is, one, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, traffic, um, Mr. Kurt, uh, his lighting, sound, and at the same time, security, and at the same time, the use for A1. So those were the five big things. And one of the things that I addressed in my, my email correspondence with the planner was with regard to traffic. As we saw on, and I don't know, Lakin, if you can bring it up, or, or to the preliminary site plan, as we discussed during the last meeting, the same amount of venues are gonna be there. There's three venues in the current structure that were built in 1978. And I'll, I'll let that bring up as well. And I'll let operations, um, Sarah Dobbs, who's with SCI, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but with regard to the preliminary site plan, which will be up here in a second, um, the venues are gonna stay the same. So we cannot have more funerals during the day, right? So it's not, it's not we're trying to have multiple more. The, with regard to the lighting and the sound, the lighting is just what um, Lakin was talking about. It has to be approved, and I think, one, correct me if I'm wrong, we sit in the lighting requirements with our approval, for, as a plan, and then the same thing with the sound, we can make that as a condition of approval court with regard to the sound, if that is something that is need to be. I don't see that being a problem at all. Do you? No. Uh, um, one question to yes. one. Uh, when you go into the demolition, are you going to go into the demolition or are you just going to explore how the business will go and then we'll decide for the second phase, which is when the demolition is going to happen? When that demolition occurs, you're going to remove the 
life that is shining today, or you're going to keep those even if you go further with the whole project. Yeah, the lights on the current building that shine directly into this property. Okay, on the existing pier on Correct. Okay, uh, I believe that's right. That's going to be demolished. That's going to be demolished. Yeah. Out. That's going to be demolished, and if we want to, I mean, Court, you know this, um, one of the things we can do to build into a condition of approval is to say, and I think we've dealt with this before with Orange County, that a demolition date certain would be done upon approval, meaning that the existing funeral home would be demolished with inside 24 months, 18 months, whatever we can decide is a reasonable time frame, we can put that as a condition of approval on that. Well, so the that usually one of the conditions are that there's no Right. Having both together at the same time, otherwise you have double occupancy. Instead, it's an increase of 5,200 square feet. The other building cannot be CO unless you actually demolish that other thing first. So exactly. Almost kind of like you've done with the power you've got. So, yeah. As to the lighting, uh, to, to, to his question, uh, how is the lighting just going to be down lighting at the, the new building, or is it going to be outside of the parking area of the building itself? So my understanding is now in the I'm not sure about it, uh, the parking. Uh, whatever is in the code for that, uh, we're not advancing the lighting design yet. Uh, but we know that it's going to be the down, down ones. Uh, so the, the, the dark skies, down light, just down light? Uh, I'm not sure, not sure yet about that one. Okay. I, I want to chime in a little bit on that excuse because the dark skies really have some particular, uh, shall I say, writings in there regarding that, but also comprises the standards. So what we don't want is that they comply with the standards, but we wind up still with the light in our face because they comply with the standards. So the standards were a little bit different back in the 70s, as you can imagine. So I believe that the lighting there currently would not comply with today's standards, um, which you know nothing gets reviewed again until they want to enforce something. So they'll have to comply with today's standards, which is Chapter Nine Lighting Ordinance. I spoke with one of the reviewers for the lighting ordinance, and he did uh, take a look at the property with me. We did just Google Street View so that he could get a look at what's there now, and he mentioned that it does look like it's kind of upward lighting currently. Um, and that it's something that's in the parking lot now. Would, we wouldn't let that happen today. Um, but you know, they haven't replaced those lights in many years. So at the time it was compliant. Um, now it's not something that's compliant. So they would be in for the future to be down with. That's not addressed anywhere specifically. Which, as far as the issue, I think ultimately the. The amount of foot candles that Orange County is going to require on the ground from a lighting perspective is absolutely what the gentlemen are talking about. And mitigating that is going to be at odds with the developer. And I mean, that's just one issue. But at the end of the day, you know, we can talk about codes and legal. It's about SCI being a neighbor that they haven't been since they took over. And it's great to hear that there's been some, I can just give you a, a laundry list that probably builds up with the people that have issues with how they've handled things over the you know, more prior years, with the exception of Sarah, who has been amazing. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any control over the SCI policy, and that is a problem. So I, there's a whole number of things. I spoke the whole time last time, so I'm trying to let everybody else talk about it. So, 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 maybe uh, in cap on the on the lighting issue, would would FCI be willing to to uh, utilize more of the past four six lighting that the county allows to be the dark sky light, not just down the dark sky light. I, I think any sort of noise or nuisance, we can always work with a condition of approval on that uh, court. I think we can obviously look at lumens, we can look at the county code, I can work very intimately with Kimberly Horn, and I can work it, it very intimately with the, the county staff to make sure that, you know, if we're requiring, they're requiring nine downlighting, but all this, I know right now, the main, correct me if I'm wrong, but the majority of the cemetery is not correct? 
It's only surrounding, so we can definitely work some sort of conditional approval language in there. That would be great. Also, I think that would be with APOS because it's down like sort of now now you can have people there which you can't see, but if you if you are able to close the gates, which I think probably you should be able to because you did it in the past. Where the prior owner and the FCI, I think, did carry that on. That would be very helpful to everyone. Uh, and go a long way, I think, in getting support of, of a lot of a lot of the neighbors. And, and again, I, I, and this goes back to Madam Commissioner's you know comment on what we can agree to because when we look to the funeral home, which is its own special exception under the Table 3877, versus where the complaints are with regard to the security violations, that again have been addressed here tonight. That would go more towards the cemetery, you know, approval. That being said. I think we're willing to work with the constituents on locking the pre-existing gates. Absolutely. What about the two I think we can. I think we can come to some sort of agreement with staff. We can look at what's been approved in the past for similar projects. I can't speak to it right now because I've pulled similar special exceptions with regard to A1. But at the same time, I think Lakin and I and county staff can work together on coming up with some theme that is something legally we can agree to, and at the same time makes the constituents feel safe at the same time. Because what we can't do is we, and Kurt knows this, but just so I explain this, we can't agree to something that we legally can't agree to because one, it sets a precedent, and number two, this is the and, and, and it's an abundance of caution, Madam Commissioner. I, I, I apologize. I, I appreciate that a lot of times people try to make the argument this has been done here, this has been done here. But our codes are code. We have the ability, if there's something that's being going through the process, to try to, to try to work with applicants and residents. So you know, yeah. don't worry about the precedence. That we'll, we'll worry about that on our side. Yeah, and I think I think that we've uh, not necessarily funeral yeah. homes, but other institutional uses, like a church. Um, we've applied some sound standards and some additional lighting yeah, standards that cool. perhaps we can we can look at. Um, I think his concern is the gate, well, security and gates. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, but I think sure. I mean, if you're willing to do it with the private folks, and why not make it a condition? To me, and if, if you can propose some language before the hearing, so we could get some agreement, that would be great. You hate to show up for the hearing and then talk about it, and then it just. It becomes more difficult for you potentially and for the rest of the county. So, okay, so, I so I think let's let's start. Let's give everyone a chance here first, or we need to break some in fifteen minutes or less. So, uh, yeah, we so don't have this. So let's. Yeah, let's. We don't agree with the two entrances that you are entrances. Uh, you know, the biggest one is right across from our driveway. We would have problems with traffic problems with water running because the property is higher than ours with uh, the rain and we have already issues there uh the traffic uh the lights uh the you know what's going on in the cemetery that is going to be across from our driveway so i'm totally against that entrance in front of our home so this is something that i i don't agree the, the northern one or the center? It's the one in the middle. In the, the, center. The, the one in the center. <laughs> right in there, right out. Uh, since, they are, since they are going to be building a road, uh, you know, further down, why don't they do a nice entrance there? I'm just curious about the clarification. Mr. Hardman and Mr. Casey have talked about the language in would be language put in before tomorrow's meeting, correct? So, in, in essence, and, and I'll let Kurt, Kurt is local government and, and I deal in local government. One of the things that would be a part of that is exactly what Lakin described before, which is typical conditions of approval language. What we can always do is allow us to agree to more language. So, and I'll, and I'll just keep it that. So, there is a hearing tomorrow. Correct. I, correct me if I'm wrong. It's approximately 11 a.m. Is this, is, so that means all the testimony, the BCA, all the commissioners listen to what they've heard. Uh, there will be discussion. All, you're all, of course, welcome to attend. They will hear the, the, the comments about security gates, lighting, downlit, yeah, all that. They will, and 
absolutely new conditions could be added and part of that. So, so if we're talking about agreeing on conditions. Is that before tomorrow's meeting? It's at tomorrow's meeting. At tomorrow's meeting. At tomorrow's meeting. Okay. <laughs> but it would be nice to see that language in advance so we don't have to try to craft that language during the hearing. So I, that's why I asked if Casey, if, if you could propose language or do you want us to propose language to make it? I mean, I think, Kurt, since you and I have dealt in this area before, if since proposed language could be brought from the constituents and then I could work on it. And what I've done, and I did this last month in Alachua County, we take like a break and we have a one on one if we run out of time during tomorrow's meeting. And then we come back in front of the BZA or we can we agree to the condition of approval from the BZA with the agreement that before we get in front of Madam Commissioner and the BOCC, that we have some sort of agreed to language, otherwise we push the BOCC meeting until we're able to come to some sort of agreement. So that's what I've seen done. So, so you, you, you all have all night, you can stay up all night, plus then you have it's, at least two hours tomorrow from, from 9 a.m. to 11. For, it's, so there's it's, plus the hearing itself. So It's the end of the month, so the bills are coming out. So, yeah, so and, 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 But if it was something as simple as dark size lighting agreement, and, um, well, we have common language that we use, and it's in the code. The gate's closed. That, that theoretically you could do tonight, but maybe that's simplifying it too much. Well, we could craft. I mean, we need all the weeds. Yeah. We could craft, and then I'm usually up there scribbling down quickly, and then it shows up in the paper. So, yeah. so uh, who else is it? What are the chances? I don't think that's the questions, but. I am late to the meeting because my wife got to go. Okay, she thought it was six o'clock, and then all of a sudden, uh, I, I kept yelling and saying, six o'clock. You have a bike. So, so I might be getting on a trip for the questions. Uh, we live at 319, that's the third house down uh, from. There you go. Hey, uh, who's the son? Rock Castello on the 319 Woodlawn, and there's a third house down. Uh, 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 so, um, a couple of my questions, it might have been answered already, so you just coming off those right. So, anyway, someone had talked about some of the neighborhood, I think it might have been Manly, not that he's here, not that he's here. Anyway, somebody came to my house today and everything. But about the speed bumps, because of the which is not going to be changed. The, the speeding will not be changed because we're adding on to adding on to the I'm sorry, the speeding's not going to change because of the adding on to the addition of the no one's rushing to get to the cemetery. Ah, I'll be on here. I'll be here. I'll be here. Anyway, uh, so the speed bumps because anyone that's going to a funeral is driving slow anyway. So I don't know why we can't have that because we, we do have people. My dog got killed um, yesterday. No, it's actually six months ago. But it sounds better than I said yesterday. Um, but anyway, nobody should be speeding to try to get to the cemetery unless you have a death wish. Um, number two is what is the timeline on starting construction on this? I'm not referring to I'm sure. Just give me a date. I mean, normally the reconstruction period is six months, and four, to, four months to get that group. So, okay, so it four, be four to eight any, months. Any, any time in 2020. Okay, uh, number three Cemetery Road is in the address, which we all love when we buy it, but it's not good for selling. Okay, uh, it's good for. For Halloween, because uh, we bought a candy we like, because there's no kid coming down the cemetery road for Halloween. Okay, anyway, just a little side, little side note. All right, so cemetery road is the address. It might counterbalance. Okay, so cemetery road in the address might counterbalance the value of the street. Wood Lawn Road. So we probably saved a lot of money buying 
lose on selling, but does it make it worse now? Of course. And then the last line, the last question at the bottom line, is there any vote that will change? And could there be a, a block to this? Uh, is this a done deal? And it really doesn't really matter. We're just letting the, uh, the neighborhood know about it. That's what tomorrow's hearing is. Tomorrow's the step one. Okay. They, they hear all the testimony. They make all the decision based on facts, the staff report. So there's no such thing as a done deal. That's why this is the first step. Tomorrow's step two, and then from there, step three, the DCC. Okay. And then I can I can jump back to uh, the being um, transportation planning review, um, and given that it's an amendment. So with that um, note, I know time is very precious here in the commission. And also I was late too, so don't worry. It was rainy and no, it, you know, it's kind of a crazy afternoon. So um, please do not hesitate to email my office. Um, this is you know, based on what you've heard, obviously, an ongoing conversation. So district one at OCFL.net. Um, we are in communication actually right now. This is the person that we have it is an appointee on BCA. Let them know exactly what the concerns are. And that's the that's the board of the meetings tomorrow. So um, I appreciate your time and being here. Thank you all for coming out and, and talking to the community and uh, until the next time. Stay safe.